Good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. Let's give a shout to the Lord this morning. Let's give him praise. Let's give him honor. Let's give him some glory. We're so thankful to be here this morning. Welcome, Turning Point Fellowship. Welcome, Facebook Turning Point Fellowship. We want to welcome you here this morning. We want to welcome you to the presence of God. Amen. Come on in, everybody. Take a seat. And we're going to open in prayer. We're first going to open with the scripture. Amen. And uh, we're also going to um, do some announcements. But Okay, here we go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our scripture today is Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. Amen? Amen. This scripture was part of the message for the women of virtue in May, and I just wanted to share it again with everyone because it was a good message. And this is what the Lord gave me. And he said to share it with the, the women, but now I just repeat myself. Okay. The word was, it's time to declutter your mind. We need to declutter our mind. We have too much going on in our mind. We need to declutter our mind. We need to declutter the, our mind with the word of God because it's, when we declutter our mind, we will be able to discern the purpose and the will of God for the plans that he has for us. Amen? Amen. In order to do this, we have to separate ourselves from the world's cultures and its ways of thinking. We need to be able to yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit by the renewing of our minds by God's word and praying God's word and meditating on God's word. That's the only way we can transform our mind. We are the only one that can transform our mind. Amen? And so and we need to do that because it is a lifetime process. It's not a one-time deal. It's a lifetime process. It's a daily process of renewing, getting the word into our spirits. Amen? So we just want to pray. So I just want to pray. Father, we want to come before you today with our lives, Father God. We want to say, Father, we want to be totally dependent upon you, Lord God, and not on ourselves, Father God. We want to be transformed, Lord God. We want our minds renewed. Father, I pray that you will give us the time, the patience, and to sit and be still and know that you are God and know that you are going to do a transformation in our hearts and in our minds. We want to yield, Father God, our lives to your Holy Spirit. So we will be changed from the inside out. Amen. And we will grow, Father God. And as we grow in your word, Father God, we're going to grow in giving you praise and honor and glory. And, Father, we will be able to glorify you as people see us. They will know that we've been changed and we have been transformed. And that brings you glory, Father. And so we commit it to you, Lord. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Glory, Father. We want to see your glory, Father. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Okay, arise, men of God and men of a higher standing, or men of a higher standard are teaming together. They're coming together May 5th and May 6th. It is to raise a revolution. Amen. So Friday night, women and children are welcome, but there is no child care provided. And on Saturday, it's men only. So invite your friends to come on Friday night and invite the men to come out on uh, Saturday. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Okay, Amen. next. Oh, yes, we're going to have potluck. We all like to eat. Amen? <laughs> it's going to be a barbecue Sunday, May 7th. Church starts at 10 a.m., and then the potluck will be afterwards. Amen? Sign up and see Arlena, what you'll be bringing. Okay, ladies. It's time to go to the mountains. Give a shout. We've been waiting for a year. We are so grateful, so blessed. We're going back to the mountains. Our second time, ladies. It's our second anniversary. We want to give a shout out to the Lord for that. Ladies, amen. May 19th, 2021, we'll be in the mountain. Okay, everybody signed up. It's packed out. It is a full house. We're so grateful. Whoa, ladies, we did it in two years. We packed it out. It is $190. Your money is due today. If you owe money, please see Conse. We got to get that money in. It has to be ready to go to the mountain. They called us last night at 9 o'clock and said, are you coming? Yes, we're coming. Yes, 
provide what we need. So they confirmed it last night. We're confirming it today. Ladies, we're going to the mountain, but we need the money. We can't go without the money. <laughs> so you all understand that, right? Yeah. Amen. Okay. One more. Okay, here we go. Men of a higher standard. Yeah. Men's advancement. Yeah. Yay! It's time to celebrate the men also. Amen? Okay, the price went up. Everything, everybody knows prices go up. Well, the price went up a little bit. It's a $50 deposit. See, please, please see Brother Fred. It's November 17th, 18th, and 19th. November's not very far away. So, ladies, it's our turn. We're three weeks away. They're about, what, nine months away? So, ladies, men, get ready. Get ready to go to the mountain. Amen. Prepare to go to the mountain. In Woo. Jesus' name, amen. That's it, right? Okay, that's it with the announcements. So, we want to welcome our worship team. Amen. God bless you all. Welcome. Guys, but you know what? When you come up here, you get nervous. <laughs> Time flies by and you get nervous, amen. But we want to open up in prayer. So, Father God, we come before you this morning, yes. Lord, in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, your word says, be still and know that I am God. Father, we want to settle ourselves in right now to be still before you, Father God, to be still before the presence of our living God. Father, we want to welcome all the people here. We want to thank you that everyone's here today, Lord God. We want to welcome the worship team. Father God, we dedicate it to you. We dedicate our lives to you. Father, be glorified today as we worship and give you honor and praise. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Go something. Get excited. Come on. Worship your God. It's all right to clap your hands. It's all right to clap your hands. We're here to worship a supernatural God. He can heal you today. He can bless you. He can do all and above. Give him glory. Never been. You've never been defeated. You've never lost a battle. You do all things are possible. You are supernatural, supernatural God, supernatural, 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 supernatural God, supernatural, supernatural, supernatural. To Him who has. To Him. Yeah. 
You've never been defeated. You never lost a battle. For you all things are possible. For you are supernatural. Supernatural God. Supernatural. 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 Supernatural God. Supernatural. 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 Unchangeable. Supernatural God, miraculous, victorious, so glorious. Supernatural God, eternal, immortal, invisible, supernatural, unchangeable, unstoppable, unshakable. Supernatural God, omnipotent, preeminent, magnificent. Supernatural God, miraculous. Victorious, so glorious, supernatural God, eternal, immortal, invisible, unchangeable, supernatural, unchangeable, unstoppable, unshakable, supernatural God, omnipotent, preeminent, magnificent, supernatural God, miraculous, victorious, so glorious. Supernatural God, eternal, immortal, you never been. You've never been defeated. You never lost a battle. For you all things are possible. For you are supernatural. Supernatural God, supernatural, 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 supernatural God, supernatural. Supernatural, 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 God. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. In the name of Jesus. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible, all things are possible, all things are possible. How many believe that? All things are possible, all things are possible, all things are possible. All things, all things are possible, all things are possible, all things are possible. All things are possible, all things are possible, all things are possible. Shout a praise. All things are possible in His name. You've never been defeated. You've never been defeated. You never lost a battle. For you all things are possible. For you are supernatural. Supernatural God. Supernatural. 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 Supernatural God. All things are possible, all things are possible, all things are possible. All things are possible, all things are possible, all things are possible. Whatever you came in here with, all things are possible. He can change that circumstance, he can change that situation in your life. All things are possible. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let's declare that. All things are possible, all things are possible, all things are possible. Let's start. All things are possible, all things are possible, all things are possible. Come on, give him a shout of victory. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory of Dios. Glory of Dios, hallelujah. Come on, let your worship, come on, let your worship come out. Someone must give, need to give a shout to shake it all off right now.
Come on. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, how we love you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We surrender it all. Nos gozamos. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh mighty one. Bless the Lord, you heavenly host. Bless the Lord, say, bless the Lord. Oh, you are oh, you his angels. And let all the earth sing for this praise. Come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and bless him, yeah. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. For the Lord. For the Lord. Jesus, you are lifted high. Jesus, you are lifted high. Oh, Jesus, you are 
in your life. Father, by your blood, Father, covered by your blood, Father. We thank you, Father. I just want to invite you to do something different today. Don't let this be your one, two, three songs. Do something different today. Some of you wanted something different. Here it is. Now is your opportunity to just surrender it to him. No longer do you have to carry this heaviness with you. No longer do you have to carry that in your heart with you. Now is your time to surrender it to him right now. Just give it to him. Father, here I am, Lord. Aquí estoy, Señor. Te lo entrego, Señor.
Up your hands. You are worthy. Come sing it out to me. Only you are Lord. Oh, come to me. Speak to, speak to my heart. You are, you are, you are. You are holy. him the more you will find him knock and the door will be open he says seek and you shall find he says as we were praising and worshiping the Holy Spirit said it hurts and it only hurts because we're still holding on to self we want all that the kingdom has to offer, but we won't let go of self. The Bible says in Psalms that some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but we trust in the name of the living God. We trust in the name of Jesus. We got to let go. We have to let go, family. Hallelujah. 
Everybody raise your hands in this place. No moving around, please. This is a holy moment, family. Father, we come to you individually, Lord, but also as a body, your body, Father. The body that you died on the cross for, that you shed your blood for. We surrender, Father. We yield to you. Have your way. Have your say in our lives. Reveal to us those things, Lord, that are not pleasing to you. We thank you for this opportunity to come into your presence and honor you and worship you and glorify your son. We say thank you. We bless you and we honor you, Father. And the church and I said, amen, amen, and amen. You may take your seats, family, in the presence of the Lord. It's beautiful. Worship team. It's unity. Glory be to God. That's unity. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. At this moment, we're going to continue in, in a state of worship. We're going to continue in a state of worship. No need to go to the restroom or do any of that. We're going to continue to worship as we receive our tithes and offerings. Amen. Let's give a hand to the Lord. Come on. I would like to read from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Thank you, Father. You know, at times at this portion of service, you know, we can get distracted. But I pray that no distractions will take place, that we will, see, we will receive the word of the Lord that he has for us this morning, amen, in regards to tithing and giving. And the word of the Lord says, I'm reading out of the New King James, verse 6, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he, purposes, as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That means God is able to do everything that you need in, his, in your life. Amen? And God is able to, to make all grace abound towards you. That you always have all sufficiency, meaning all your needs are met in all things, and that he's even going to go beyond and give you enough to give. So your needs are going to be met, and he's going to give you enough to give. Amen? Amen. So right now, as you raise your hands for those that need a tithe and envelope, uh, tithe and offering envelope, amen, raise your hands. Just know this, that the Lord is going to give you all that you need, and he'll give you even more to give back to him. Amen? amen. If you did happen to, uh, didn't if you happen, I'm getting a little nervous here because Pastor Joe's looking at me. Excuse me. If you happen to not have check or cash, you can always use our text to give. Amen. Amen. Text the word give to the phone number 714-477-7736. One more time, kids, all together. 714-477-7736. Three, six, you guys pray over your offering, please. And remember, Turning Point Fellowship, we don't take your offering. We receive it as you give it from a grateful heart. Amen? Amen. Give in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
you father you know um, I want to speak a word of the Lord over this tithes and offerings it's only by his word family that we are able to do anything in that same chapter 2 Corinthians chapter 9 this is verse 10 now it says now May he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. That's you, family. That's your righteousness. Amen? Thank you, Father. So, Father, we just come before you. Stretch your hands forward, family. Father, we come before you, and we are just grateful and thankful for another opportunity, Father, to sow into your kingdom, Lord. We thank you for choosing us and trusting us, Father, in this capacity. We pray that you would bless every household, every family, Father. You know their needs, Lord. So we thank you. Give the leadership. And Pastor Angel, Father, the wisdom on how to allocate your funds, Lord. So we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Let's, let's give a hand clap to the worship team. Amen. Worship team, you guys are dismissed. want to thank you. Hallelujah. So before I have you guys sit down. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to, um, first we're going to release our children. Amen. Let's give a hand clap to the children. Amen. Continue standing. I'm going to invite Pastor Angel up. Amen. To uh, invite our guests. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessing with the Lord. Amen. 
Are you guys blessed? Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. I'm loved of the Lord. Goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life. Hallelujah. We're about to, uh, we're about to, come on, give, give them a round of applause. Amen. Get excited. We're about to uh, receive a, uh, ah, man, I can't even say the word, but uh, I'm excited. Uh, a powerful speaker, I'm going to use that word. <laughs> An anointed vessel of God, a young man, amen, Pastor Joey Bynes. Come on up, bring him up, amen, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, you may be seated for right now. I was laughing when I looked at that picture. I was like, where did Pastor Angel find that picture of me? <laughs> Give me one second before I get situated. But I want to thank you guys uh, for having me uh, this morning. Uh, I want you to know the way we know each other is that I'm married to his cousin, uh, Rosemary. And I must say... <clears throat> That by far, and yes, I'm going to say it, I married the finest Baruch. I, I, I did say that. You know, but we pastor Nuevo Amanecer, a Spanish church. The Lord led us there uh, to help the undocumented uh, community. About 97, 98% of our congregants are undocumented. Don't know what you believe in that, and I'm not going to get into politics this morning. Uh, but we have a heart towards the immigrant community, and we believe that they're here for a purpose. Uh, but let me tell you this, that we pastor the best church on the face of this earth. Now, you may say, man, he's showing off. He married the, the finest Baruch, and now he's saying that... Uh, you know, he pastors the best church on the face of this earth, not just in Orange County. But you know why I said that and, and how I learned or came about to say that is that our church is the most problematic on the face of this earth. That type of church is a church that has you on your knees. That's the kind of church that you just can't speak what you want. You just can't stand behind the pulpit and, and your introduction, your three points and your conclusion and you go home. Uh, no doctor degree, no ordination could uh, be able to prepare me to face such a church that we're encountering now. And those are the ones that literally make me cry before God and tell the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to speak? But there was no exception on me standing before you guys this morning. When I got the phone call from your pastor and I said, is there a specific topic? Uh, and he just said, whatever the Lord puts on you. So I'm going to share what God laid on my heart. And I really don't know how you guys do church. All I know is that we serve the same living God. But I'm going to speak as if this was my church. I don't know if you got that, but in other words, to the most problematic I want to speak to you this morning out of the subject, go and tell. And I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. And I want you to go with me to Matthew chapter 11, verses 4 through 5. Just shout amen when you're there. I'll wait for you for a moment. Matthew chapter 11, verses 4 through 5. Amen. Now, so you can know my style of speaking I would only stay on Matthew 11 or I'll let you know when I'm there. Uh, the other scriptures I do not quote, okay? Matthew 11, 4 through 5, we read God's word in Jesus' mighty name, and it says, Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind sees, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Spirit of the living God. 
I come before you this morning, Lord, with a shout of praise. Just thankful, Lord, that you opened up the door so I could speak to your people, your body. You know what they need and what they're going through. I didn't ask questions, Lord. I didn't ask about people's life or even on how they do church. But you that know all things, my God, I, I, I pray that you will speak. Speak into their life. I, I prayed. I consecrated myself. I, I studied. I, I knelt before you. I had a, a, a quiet time before your presence to be able to hear your word. And I stand before your people this morning with the conviction that you spoke to me first. That you minister to my life, Lord. And, and I have the conviction of the Holy Spirit that, that you have spoken to me, and now I ask in Jesus' beautiful name that you will write the last page in the heart of everyone that hears this message. Father, that everyone will leave this place encouraged. Father, praising your holy name. Before you take a seat, turn to your neighbor and say, hold on to your seat because he ain't playing. You could take your seat after you said that. I'm going to ask you to give me just a little bit more monitor only, not in the house. There's a great truth. Everyone can be spiritual when all goes well. Everyone can smile when there's health and there's provision. Everyone can shout praises to God and say how good God is when, when you have all you need. Oh, we can come to church, sing praises, uh, uh, clap, dance, uh, have great faith, and, and declare the promises of God when, when there's no present trials. But what about when all hell breaks loose? Can you still shout? Can you still dance? Can you still clap? Can you still glory to God? Can you still come to his house faithfully? Can you still give of yourself and what he has given to you in faith because he is still a good God? There's a great truth. No matter how spiritual you think you are, and let me repeat it. No matter how spiritual you think you are, no matter how much knowledge of the word you, you have or how many divine experiences you've had with God, every strong believer has his days of weakness. Every warrior in faith has his days of fear and doubt. Every spiritual person has his days of brokenness. Every firm believer in Christ has his days when he's more on the ground than, and then in the third sky. Like my generation says, Generation X, every day, every dog has his day. People want the anointing. They, they want the glory. They want the growth. They, they want the power, but they don't want to go through the fire. They, they, they don't want to suffer. They don't want the trial. They, they don't want hardship. They don't want to, uh, they, they want to be used by God, but they don't want to pay the price. I come to tell you this morning, if you can't handle the demons at, at your present level, you will never be able to handle the demons that are awaiting on the next level. How will you know that God is a healer if you're never sick? How will you know that God is provider if you're never in need? How will you know that, that he is the God of peace if, if all hell doesn't break loose? How will you know that he restores and make all things new if you're never broken? How will you know eh, uh, that God gives water to the thirsty, satisfies a hungry soul if you're never in want? Church. How would you know that we serve a miracle-working God if you're never afflicted? I am a living testimony 
that God still does miracles. God still restores marriages. God still saves our lost children. I am living proof that God defends his children against attacks of the enemy. I am witness that he gives strength and power to the weary. Listen, the presence of adversary doesn't mean the absence of God. I think you need to wake up this morning. The presence of adversary doesn't mean the absence of God. It just means that God is about to take you to a whole nother level. It just means that you're about to see more glory. You're about to become a living testimony. You're about to receive the dunamis of God, the power of God. You're about to walk, see, and receive victory. The problem isn't that you doubt. The problem isn't that you fear that that you get or we get discouraged or, or even that we complain. How many complainers are in the house? The problem is, are you going to stay there? Are you going to allow it to defeat you? Are you going to stay down or are you going to rise up in the name of Jesus Christ? Are you going to activate the faith? Are, are you going to declare the promises of God? Are you going to praise him in the midst of trial? The question is, how would you respond in your present trial? We see Jesus doing great miracles. Many with infirmities and afflictions and evil spirits. Many blind men receive their sight. Uh, uh, throughout scripture, we see the impossible becoming possible. Uh, people being delivered from demons, um, from satanic oppression, uh, uh, from the lies of the enemy. We see uh, cripples walk, the deaf hear, the mute speak, and, and the dead are raised. And, and Jesus' ministry was confirmed by miracles, One Wonders and signs which God did through him. Jesus' fame was spreading like no other. And on a certain occasion, John the Baptist or uh, uh, disciples came and, and said, listen, John the Baptist's disciples came. Let me, let me put a little bit of my thinking in it. Some chismosos came and, and told him. Now, you don't even need to speak Spanish to know what a chismoso is. And uh, why don't you give your neighbor a holy elbow and say he's talking to you. John the Baptist's disciples came to him and said, He who was with you beyond the Jordan to whom you have testified, he is baptizing and all are coming to him. Listen to John's answer. He must increase, but I may decrease. He exalts Christ. He has a deep understanding or a revelation that he's from above. A, a man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. John knows uh, Juan Sabe. I, I, I need to be less and Christ is Lord over my life and he needs to become more. John is humbled. John humbles himself before his disciples. John shows leadership. John shows what a man of God is. He understands that he is just a, a, a messenger, a voice in the wilderness. Uh, he understood uh, uh, that, that he's just a voice uh, of the one that's preparing a way. John the Baptist preaches with power, with authority and boldness. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Generation of vipers uh, who warn you to flee from the wrath to come. Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. He was a type of preacher that would dare to be different in the midst of darkness. He called sin for what it was. 
He didn't care of political gain. He, he, he was interested in, 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 in knowing or giving glory to God. His, his interest was a way of what society thought. He, he was there to declare the glory of God to all. He stood before Herod, for he was living in sin with his brother's wife. In other words, he was in adultery. Herodias, he called him for it, and, and it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Uh, uh, my way of thinking that, that we need preachers like this in this generation. Preachers that aren't afraid to say the truth. Preachers that still believe in a holy God. Preachers that know that he is coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. Preachers that aren't interested in numbers and money or buildings, but to declare the word of God. Whether you get offended or not, I'm going to preach the truth. Whether you leave this church or not, sorry, Pastor Angel, whether you leave this church or not, I'm going to give you the message of God. I'm going to declare the power of God over your life. Listen to me now. Even if you stop tithing. Now give him a holy elbow and say he's definitely talking to you. Because of the anointing over his life. Because of the type of message that God gave him. Because he spoke with power and authority and an anointing. John was thrown in jail. Let me tell you, there were consequences. When the system uh, or, or the state wants to break a man, he is thrown in solitary confinement. It is to break you, to torture you, to undo all you know. And I dare to say that, that here is where the devil steps in, uh, plays with your mind, your emotions, your will. Uh, and where the devil whispers in your ear, where is God now? Where is he that you spoke about? Where is he that you stood in the, in the middle of the Jordan declaring to, to repent and the kingdom of heaven is at hand? He, he was or felt alone. How many of you have ever felt alone? We come to the scriptures to see a different John. A John we never seen nor heard of. And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ. He sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one or do we look for another? He heard. How did he hear? Was it from his disciples or let me put it in my terms from the chismosos that came the first time? How did he hear? Was it from his disciples? Did he hear it from the guards? Did he hear it from a prison window, which was unlikely because history tells us that he was literally in a dungeon? Or was it an, an internal voice? Was it his emotions playing with him? Church, let me tell you, be careful who you let speak into your life. For not every voice is from God. I don't care how spiritual he thinks he is. How many divine experiences she has had. Do not allow anyone to speak into your life. Let me just tell you. Let me just come over here for a moment. We never practice on allowing people to lay hands on our head. Laying hands on our children. Don't care how spiritual and how many tongues and how much they prophesy. It is a holy place. Uh, it is not for everyone. We all pray, but we're not all intercessors. 
we're all called to minister at one level, but we're not all called to minister one on one. Listen to me. Be careful who you let speak into your life for not every voice is from God. Don't let anyone speak into you for not everyone around you is hearing from God. When John heard of the works of Christ, are you the coming one or do we look for another? Earlier, we, we see John exalt Christ. Uh, he must increase, but I must decrease. This should have, uh, should have filled John with joy and gladness. It, it should have put a dance under his feet. Uh, he should have shouted out, uh, hallelujah, glory to God. But he doubted. Prison, or in his case, a dungeon would do that to you. Have you ever failed being in a solitary place? In darkness, uh, alone, in, in a dungeon, being isolated would do that to you. Hearing other voices would do that to you. We come to see a different John. A John that shows another side of him. A John that in my opinion or what I have gone through in life and in ministry, we see the transparent of John. We just don't see that John behind the platform. That John that, that could be powerful. That John with authority. That John with the anointing. That, that John could be strong in every trial. We see the real him. The one that's not hiding behind a mask or, or behind a suit, behind a tie. We, we see the John that, 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 that is real. Can, can anyone be real this morning? We see a John maybe even in depression. Maybe in weakness, in discouragement, in fear or doubt. We see him even question Christ. I don't care how holy you are, how spiritual you think you are, how many times you've been caught up in the third heavens with Paul, you will have your day of brokenness. You don't hear me this morning. You can be a back flipping, holy rolling, tongue speaking, demon casting believer, but you will still have your day. Jesus, where are you? Why can't I see you? Why can't I feel you? Why can't I hear you? Why aren't you here? Why haven't you delivered me from prison? Even Jesus cried out, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? Father, if it is possible, let, let this cup or let this trial, let, let this problem pass from me. John was filled with the Holy Ghost from the womb of his mother. It was prophesied in the Old Testament that John will come. He is the one that said, Behold the, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John is, is the one that said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not even worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. John is is the one that baptized Jesus. He is the one that, that saw the heavens open for Christ. He is the one that saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and, and lightning upon him. He is the one that heard a, a voice, listen, a heard, heard a voice from heaven that said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I don't care how many divine experiences you've had, how much knowledge of the word you have, how many titles, how many degrees you have, you will have your day. Yes. Jeremiah the prophet, 
wanted to resign ministry. Moses second-guessed his calling. Elijah wanted to die. Peter denies Christ. Thomas needed to see in order to believe. Now listen to this. Zechariah, John the Baptist's father, doubted in regards to the birth of his son, John. It is said, you may have Jesus in your heart, but you got your granddaddy in your bones. You didn't hear me. In other words, sometimes we lead, we act, we respond, we think according to those who walked before us. How many times have you sounded like your mom? How many times have you responded like your dad? How many times have you done something and said, your grandpa used to do that, or your grandma acted like that, or man, I just sounded like my mom. Listen, what scripture says about John's father, because Zechariah didn't believe, in other words, because he didn't believe that, that Elizabeth was going to uh, birth a child in their older age, the angel told him that you will become mute. You won't be able to speak until the word that came from heaven to you is fulfilled. And now we see John filled with doubt. Some may call it something passed down from generation to generation. Others go as far, listen, others, not me, uh, others go as far calling it generational curses because of the way we have, or we, we behave, or, or the things we do. But I got something for those that believe in generational curses. Because of what Christ done on the cross and my obedience in the word, I believe in generational blessings. I am a child of God. I have been set free. The chains have been broken. I will never be the same. God shows mercy upon a thousand generations. You're not understanding me. Because my grandpa died of cancer doesn't mean that you're going to die the same way. Because your dad was a drunk and a drug addict doesn't mean that, that you have to be the same way. Because my parents got a divorce doesn't mean that you're going to get divorced. Because your parents were bad parents doesn't mean that you're going to be a bad parent. Church, we have been set free. We are in the hands of the Holy God. Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? The Greek meaning for another is another of a different kind. In other words, uh, another Savior, uh, another Messiah, or someone that would do things differently. Let me just put my own two cents in it just because I'm human. Another one that will heal me when I'm sick. Another one that will provide to me when I'm in want. Another one that will restore my marriage when I'm on the verge of divorce. And we have all that in Christ. But when we're going through the fire, we do, not that we will, we do doubt. John doubted. Doubt means being double-minded. Can't make a decision or choose. Being uncertain, questionable, hesitating to believe. Listen, lacking conviction. One thing is to preach from the Jordan. Another thing is to sit in the dungeon. You're not understanding me again this morning. Maybe I need to preach to you in Spanish. No speaker English. It's easy to preach when your marriage is intact. 
when you can pay your bills, when your children are saved, when, when you're healthy and happy. But what about when all hell breaks loose? When, when, when you're on the verge of divorce, when you're broken, when your sons come home drunk, when your daughter comes home pregnant and the doctor says you got cancer. Can you continue to believe and, and be bold for God in the midst of trials? The psalmist said, free my soul out of prison so I may pray, praise your holy name. I feel a setting free this morning. When you're punished, or in this case, when you're put in prison because of something you've done, well, you deserve it. When you're put in prison, uh, you're suffering because of God's doing, it's something else. I think we all have been filled with doubt. We, we all question. We, we all break down. Just look at Job for a moment. Lost everything because God put him through the fire. Look at Jeremiah. He is called or considered the, the weeping prophet because God willed it. Look at the apostles persecuted for, for preaching the gospel. I, I, I want to point out three things before I conclude this morning. I want you to notice who John went to. Even in the midst of doubt, John went to Jesus. When you're filled with doubt and you're uncertain and you can't make up your mind when, when you're hurting, when you're broken, when you're distressed, go to Jesus. You see, a man can help you so far. The doctor will maintain you on medications. The psychiatrist will only tell you this and that. But we serve the living and powerful, mighty God that can help you exceedingly more abundantly, far beyond what man can help you. Uh, uh, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Church, God comforts the downcast. There's comfort for you this morning. Number two, I want you to notice Jesus' answer. Because John came to him, listen, because John came to him, Jesus answered and said to him, go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. You missed it this morning. That was a Pentecostal moment. I didn't need to shout. I didn't need to jump. I didn't, I didn't even need to encourage the church. Praise him and worship him. You're waiting for man to help you. But there should be a praise, a, a worship a within it that, that God is still doing what you think that, that he has stopped doing over your life. Jesus took John to the scriptures. John came to Jesus what his doubts, what his concerns, and Jesus took him to the scriptures. Listen to a few verses. In that day, the deaf shall hear the words of the book. The eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. The humble also shall increase their joy in the Lord. And the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One in Israel. That was Isaiah 29, 18 through 19. Isaiah 35, 5 through 6b. The eyes of the blind shall be opened. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. The lame shall leap like a deer. And the tongue of the dumb shall sing. Listen, Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. 
Remember, Jesus took him through the scriptures, and by him quoting that, he took him back to what was already written. The Spirit of the Lord, thank you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Listen, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. I feel a sense of discouragement even in the midst of your collapse. I sense uh, doubt and depression. and I feel a heaviness in my spirit that, that you're questioning even your marriage. You're questioning your home and your job and you're even questioning your church. Let me, let me just tell you for a moment. John came to Jesus. Jesus took him to the scriptures. And, and I sense that some of you get riled up and hyped, hyped up. And, and you want to hear a prophetic word. But, but you're not in the word to, to receive a prophetic word. Now, let me get a little deeper. Some of you are waiting for a prophet to come and prophesy over you to, to, to tell you how your marriage is going to be and what the, your life outcome and how God is going to provide and all that. But, but let me just tell you something. Uh, uh, you have a man of God in this house that, that prophesies to you every Sunday morning. You don't need to wait for another. You don't, you don't need to look for another. You don't, you don't need to go somewhere else to, to someone else. There, there's an anointing. There, there's a word. And, and you need to be brought back to the scripture so you can understand that, that you're waiting for another but the word has always been in front of you but but you're not understanding and and you're still stuck in the dungeon instead of praising God for the word that has already been given to you some of you are even questioning your church listen and, and yes I'm talking to you some of you are even questioning your leadership or or the way it's being led or the things that are being done. Some of you are even questioning your salvation. You, you, you're questioning if, if God is going to come through for you. If, if the miracle is going to happen. Is God who he says he is? I want to encourage you this morning. When in doubt, go to the scriptures. When you need answers, go to the scriptures. When you're being attacked, go to the scriptures. When you're about to lose all, go to the scriptures and declare the promises of God. I am a child of God. I am blessed by God. I am set free. I am who he says I am. I am going to make it. I'm 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 going to make it. All things. Listen. All things. Look at your neighbor. All things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Let me share with you my last point this morning. For those that know the rest of the story, listen to me. For those that are Bible scholars, theologians of the scripture, for those that know the story, 
You may say, Pastor, good message, but John dies at the end. I thought you said we serve a miracle working God and that He is mighty, He is powerful. And I thought you just said that I'm going to make it and that all things are going to be all right. And for those that know the scripture, You may say good message this morning, but man, only if he didn't die at the end, I will believe it. You're filled with doubt. Allow me to speak into your life for a moment. The message that God gave me was go and tell them, ve y diles. Es decir, a ustedes. That means you. Listen to Jesus' words to John. Matthew eleven six, and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Offended is he who doesn't stumble because of me. He that doesn't trip over because of me. We got too many believers thrown in the towel before time. Believers who are complaining about everything, and they're the chismosos of turning point. Believers who go back to the world instead of going to the scriptures. Believers that leave their calling because they don't like what they hear and see in church. They don't like what is happening. Believers that say this church thing is just too hard. It's just not for me. I'm not going to make it. Believers that want the blessing but don't want to be obedient. Believers that want the power but don't want to pay the price. Believers that want the miracle but don't want to serve him. Believers that live like they're still in the world. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Church, I want to tell you this morning, stay the course. Keep going. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Breakthrough is coming. Victory is coming. Miracles are coming. Keep on preaching, keep on serving, keep on going, keep on being obedient. For God will perfect that which concerns you. You. No, you. Yes, you. God will perfect. He will do all that which concerns you. Something that I've seen over the last 30 years that I reconciled my life and I've been ministering is that believers throw in the towel way before time. Your breakthrough was there. Your miracle was there. God was about to come through. And and because you threw in the towel, it never happened. And then you complain because it didn't happen, but you're the one that gave up. Matthew 11, 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent, the violent, take it by force. Will you dare to be different in the midst of darkness? Will you dare to be bold? Will you dare to be violent enough to take hold of the kingdom of heaven? Jesus said of John, Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. Because he was willing to pay the cost. He was willing to do or live in God's will. He was willing to live for Christ. Now listen, he was willing to die for Christ. There's a great difference from that generation to this generation. Because, yeah, I'll come to church or I'll do the church thing. I'll sing and I'll do all of that. But you're not willing to die for the cause of the gospel. 
Let me tell you. Tell your neighbor, man, now you made him mad. Let me tell you. The reason there's not so many manifestations of miracles like in those days, because the church of this generation isn't willing to die for the cause of the gospel. Revival is birthed out of obedience. Revival is birthed out of someone weeping and broken on the altar or before God. Revival is birthed out of someone willing to pay the price. Listen to me. People are willing to be behind the platform and, and to be seen, but, but you don't see that brokenness within them and, and that anointing within them, that which takes you to heaven and, and that brings conviction into your life. And let me let you know that, that before you could take anyone else to the presence of God, you need to be in the presence of God. You cannot take anyone where you haven't been. You can't give a word to anyone that you haven't heard. Let me get deeper. You cannot correct someone else's marriage without God correcting your marriage first. You cannot correct someone else's kids. And God revealed to me, no, who in the heck are you listening to? You cannot. God speaks to you first. There's a reality. The reason that there's empty pews and, and inconsistent people and unfaithful and dividing, it, listen, it's just complaining about everything is because you're not really living for Christ. Let me, let me tell you, I, I, I sense something. You, you pretend that you're spiritual, but you're emotionally immature. And you cannot be healthy spiritually if you're emotionally unhealthy. You can't. No matter how many tongues you speak, how many backflips you do on the altar. Just look at the way you react, you respond. Look at the way how you talk and you think. Look at the way you complain and look how bitter you are inside. God wants to do something within you, but, but he can't, but because of you and, and you're not allowing him to do what he wants to do in you. The truth is, we're not even willing to die for the flesh. What am I be doing dying for Jesus? Whatever trial you're in, whatever you're going through, whatever may be the outcome, I want you to know, and this is for those that are faithful, and I dare to say even unfaithful. God is with you. And he's asking you to come to him. He's asking you to come to the scriptures. Now, I said that I'm going to finish. Let me just share with you something. Let me share something with you. I know a little bit about doubt. Just a little bit. Last year in August, I, I turned 50. And for those that are my generation or those that know, there's a lot of exams that come with it. And there was a time where, last year, where I couldn't even preach anymore. I was winded and about to faint. And a lot of times that I told my wife, man, I, I can't do it today. I just felt really bad and, and itself, well, in a part I felt okay, but I come to find out after all my blood work that my blood was shot. I don't have time, really, it will be for another day, to tell you all the changes that had to come to my life to be where I'm at today. The reality is that I didn't need only a miracle 
I need a change in my life. But let me tell you, the one that shook me the most as a man, being transparent, is that my PSA, my prostate level came out elevated. And it broke me as a man and going to the urologist and the urologist telling me, well, you just turned 50 and you have an elevated PSA and we'll just cut your prostate out and you'll be good. It broke me as a man. What would that mean for my marriage? I mean, be more transparent as men. What would that do to me as a man? Where would I be at? What would I do? And I surrounded myself with six other pastors that have way more experience than I. Some of them has had prostate removal. Some of them had at that moment uh, prostate cancer, BPH, and other things concerning man's health. And we bathe this situation in God, in prayer. We went to Jesus and we went to the scriptures and I was just in awe to hear and see how many men cried with me. There's a reality that if we're going through the same thing, I understand you and I'm going to cry. I, I, I know. Let, let me just tell you, just jumping out for a moment as a pastor, I, I'm grateful for, for all prayer. But, but what I'm going through as a minister of the gospel, I, I, if you only knew the demons that I encounter every day and, and sometimes the dungeons I'm, I'm put in, I need people to cry out. I need people to shout. I need people to rebuke. I, I need people to intercede. I, I need people to be with me. We as a church, we say, hey, hey, you tell me your problem, I'm praying for you. I give him a crumble. I'm praying for you. You want to know why I tell him that at that moment? Because I don't want to forget later on. And I could come back, brother. I don't know your name, but John, I'm praying for you. I prayed for you. I went to the Lord for you. We went to Jesus. Listen, I'm about done. And I remember that at moment I was just broken, and this was last year around November, and, and I remember that my mom called me on the phone, and and someone had a prophetic word over me. I don't know if you believe in prophecy or not, but just listen for a moment. I remember my mom telling me, son, uh, there's someone here right now that has a word over your life and wants you to know that the devil is mad at you. That what you're going through right now is nothing but a trial. That the heat is being turned on. And the person repeated the devil is mad at you because he has tried to make you fall for years and you haven't failed. I'm just going to say what was said to me. There has been women that throw themselves at your feet to make you fall and you have stood strong. You have been through different trials in life and life and wanting to give up, but you stood strong. You need to know at this moment, my mom talking, you need to know at this moment, God says, keep on preaching. You need to keep on going. You need to keep on believing. You need to keep on serving God. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. For God, listen, God has healed you. But let me be honest. I doubt it. There's a little bit of John the Baptist in me. Even though I believe in the scriptures, I preach a few times out of the week, I doubt it. Lord, was this word really for me? Are you really going to do it for me? My PSA is high. My blood work is shot. They, I went through an MRI, and, and it doesn't look good. I was just hearing bad, bad, bad news. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. On January 9th, I remember sitting in this cold room, and I just began to worship and pray, and, and I was studying, and, and just something really registered in my spirit that if I'm willing to serve God, no matter the outcome. And I remember that I just cried in that moment, and 
I began to speak in tongues, and I just told God, it is well with my soul. I remember that they did more tests on me, and that morning, the next day, the doctor calls me and says, Mr. Ibanez, I don't know what's been going on, but you need to know that your blood work is clean. There's no diabetes, no cholesterol, no, no high blood pressure. But the one that really just made me cry were saying, there's no traces of prostate cancer over the life. Yes, we go through trials. And yes, we always want the healings and we always want the miracles. But the reality is, are we still willing to give him all when God's answer is no? The word that God gave me for you this morning is go and tell them, go to Jesus. Go back to the scriptures. For there, you will find all you need. I want to do two calls this morning before we conclude. Two calls. If there's someone here that doesn't have Jesus in their heart or someone that has backslid someone that's undecisive and yes you give Jesus credit but you have not given him your life I would like to invite you to come up that the pastor from this church and his team may pray for you is there anyone here this morning that will say that I need Jesus in my life The second call that I would like to make, if there's anyone here going through a trial and there's doubt, there's discouragement, you're depressed, maybe even bitter, you're filled with fear, and you want to know the outcome, but you have pulled back. If you have a little bit of John the Baptist in you, I would like to pray for you this morning. And as I'm praying, this altar is open. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the opportunity you've given me to minister to your people. Father, you that sees every mind, every heart, you that know our past, our present, and even our future. You know the struggles that we're going through even at this moment. You know the doubts that come with it. And you know the cries and the shouting and, and even where are you, oh God? You know my loneliness. You see my brokenness. Father, and today I come to this altar taking a step of faith, Lord, but believing in your word, coming to Jesus, receiving your word. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you would do that what your word says that it would do. Even what you said, oh Christ, that the works that I do, you will do mightier than I. And as a student of the Bible, it interests me because you raised the dead, you cleansed the lepers, you gave sight to the blind, you opened the mouth, the ears, you lifted up those that were paralyzed and done so many miracles and how is it that we would do mightier things father today i pray that today will not be just another sunday another day of church 
that it won't just be about their shout and their praise, but that there will be an inner brokenness. That you will do something within the heart of us. Where no one needs to lay hands on me. Where no one needs to motivate me. Where no one needs to come and give me a prophetic word or another word. But that I receive your word just as it is. Father, today, I pray that you will lift your people. I pray, Father, that people will be transparent with you. That people will be real, Lord. That people won't be embarrassed to praise your name. And I'm not limiting myself with shouts and claps. I'm speaking about an inner brokenness. Listen to me. Are you willing to allow the Spirit of God to break you? I mean, break you where you literally decrease and he increases in your life what does real praise look like what does men lifting holy hands look like what does woman worshiping at the altar look like what does a living church look like what does inner brokenness look like Listen, it's just you and God right now. It's just you and God at this moment. And I dare to say that God desires to hear the cry of his people. God desires to hear the praises of his people. Can you still praise him with all you have? Love the Lord with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Love him with every bit of you. Doesn't matter what someone else says, what someone else thinks. You didn't come to be entertained. You came to worship the living God. It shouldn't matter what someone else says or or thinks or begins to talk. You're not doing it for man. You're you're doing it for God. and, And you're doing it to leave this place completely different. Where is the church of the living God? Don't depend on someone praying for you. Don't depend on someone singing rely completely on the spirit of God rely on rivers of living water flowing through you rely that there's something so great going on in you that you manifest it Worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. Be transparent and sincere before God. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. The Spirit of the living God is here. How would you respond to the presence of God? How would you respond to the God that's just not around you or on the side of you, but but the God that's in you? How you How can you contain such a mighty God? Spirit of God, 
this is your time. This is your moment. This is your church, oh God. Do what you need to do. Do what you need to do. Let's raise praises unto God. Let's worship God. You guys just start singing something. I'm going to tell you, say something here real quick. I don't want no one coming up and laying hands on people. He, he's here. The Spirit of God is here. The prophet's here. The pastor's here. Let him do what the Lord has to do through him. So we, I don't need a lot of people coming up here. I don't need nobody really right now. Unless he tells you to. We're going to do this in order. This has been coming already for a long time. Now the Lord is speaking here today. So I want you guys to know that. 